People are curious how a guy, you've sold how many records? 28 million. And made millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. How did you end up in here? <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think everyone who's watching knows how I ended up in here. I don't know if they do. I'm pretty sure they do. Anytime you get it, I'm pretty sure they do. You know, there's, there's, how do I end up in here? Never let anyone, like something another woman friend of mine, Joy, told me, never let anyone take you off your square. And if it feels uncomfortable, then you are probably not in the right place. You know, just don't sell your, sell your soul, you know? And, and men and women do this. You know, I would say even to young boys, I've seen young boys get turned out in this industry too. Kendall Jenner gets vampy. Kendall keeps it goth in the Twilight inspired shoot. There's also parts in the album where you speak to Lucy. Yeah, yeah, Lucifer. Yeah. Yep. Trip devil. So you, 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 it's trippy. You see both sides it's of. It, yeah, man. It's, 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 when I, when I go inside, I may do an after party. <laughs> I see it all around, man. I may, I may do an after party, and this is how I be able to write these records, cause right. it's not just the positive energy that speaks to me. It's the negative too. It's the evils too, and we all have temptations. Right. You know. Me, I'm just fortunate enough to, to translate them temptations through record. Right. You know, I always said that this is this is truly a gift for me. Putting these records out is a gift for me because I'm not only a voice for myself, but I'm a voice for people who can't express themselves like that. Right. And Lucy is one of my favorite records because it's me actually coming to realization of the evils rather than act like it's not going around. My thoughts are not happening. My thoughts are happening right in front of my face. Mm -hmm. I gotta present them. That, that reminded me, in a way, and not to compare it to anything, because I do think this is an original, maybe mm -hmm. one of the most original works we've seen in a long time, but it reminded me a little bit of Snoop. Yeah. And Murder Was The Case. Mm -hmm. Where of he course. had that conversation of with, with, with the devil, with Lucifer, and that temptation was in his face. And of course. Seems like Lucifer Morningstar, is that a stage name? God given, I'm afraid. Why don't you tell me something? How does she end up dying in a hailstorm of bullets and you get away without a scratch? The benefits of immortality. What will your corrupt little organization do about this? We're done here. Someone out there needs to be punished. Stop caring. You're the devil. 
America's most watched network, unveiled its fall primetime lineup last night, including seven shows making their debut. Among them, the highly anticipated comedy, Angel from Hell. We're never supposed to intervene in a human's life. Oh, is that some sort of angel rule? As a matter of fact, it is, yes. We're supposed to help from afar. Be subtle about things, you know, like implant a, an inspirational thought or nudge you towards a conditioner that would give your hair that perfect bounce. The Pantene? You're welcome. <laughs> Two stars from the upcoming series on the Sci-Fi Network, Childhood's End. Sounds interesting just from the title alone, but it's a unique series, guys. Is it kind of like a mini-series? Yeah, absolutely it is, yes. But nice. I think I, I, I like the format of it. It's, it's, you know, three nights in a row. I play, as you say, a character called Corellin, who is an overlord. Mm -hmm. and, and the overlords come to Earth at a time when there is uh, economic crises, wars, disease. The world's in a very bad way. Arthur C. Clarke wrote that in 1954. Here we are in 2015. We have economic crises. We have people with not enough food to eat. We have an increasingly serious war going on in the Middle East. So, you know, um, anyway, what happens is that uh, these superior beings come to Earth to supervise the running of the planet. And we eradicate disease, economic crises, wars and create a utopia that lasts for a hundred years. Mm -hmm. But utopia comes at a price. Of course. Just being in such an infrastructure like BET, and I still work in the film and television industry, and I have actors that we see on TV every day that are my friends, and I'm in their homes, and I know that they ain't got no money. I've been over rappers' cribs that will go on MTV cribs talking crazy, and I've been in the house like, word, you living a little bit better than me, because it's all based off perception. Even going back to what, uh, what the brother talked about with the homosexuality with the rap, here's the kicker. It's not that the rappers are gay. That's not it. That's a misconception. What it is, it's about control. See, these, that's what makes it, that's why you see so many buffoons nowadays in television and film doing things that we know are like, wow, Jamie Foxx, you would say that? Wow, Jay-Z, you would actually sit there and do an anti-Semitic commercial? Because they're in a bind, because see, Jay-Z's not gay. I'll use him as an example. He's not gay, but with, and once you reach a certain level within that weapon of mass destruction, you have to give something up. There's something that you're going to give up because you got to be down with that crew. And how do I know? Because it happened to me. That is why I'm standing here talking right now. I reached a certain level at the, in that station. I was the only producer to ever come as a new kid and create a multi-million dollar revenue generating show. So it's not even reality television. But they understand that majority of us, whether we like it or not, are lazy as hell. On a spiritual level, we think because we work three jobs that now nah, I'm not lazy. But spiritually, psychologically, the masses are lazy. But the majority of us, and I know it's going to be kind of harsh, but the majority of us will never fulfill our dreams. So we'll never be in a position to say what we would or would not do. You understand what I'm saying? We'll never be in that position. Because before I got there, I would say the same thing until I got there. You understand? So I literally lived with the devil taking me up the mountain and saying, you can go to the left. You have all of this. Deep. And it was, I was there. I was, they, it was ritualistically done. The, the vice president sent his right-hand man to me three straight weeks. They do everything in threes. But well, now it's time for them to introduce me to the inner workings of this, of this monster that's, that's created. And that's why nowadays we see people caught up on secret societies, but it ain't no secret if everybody's talking about it. As a television producer who was Dave Chappelle's standing, which means I did his rehearsals season one or two of Chappelle's show, I saw what happened to Dave. Dave used to give me advice all the time. And one of the key things he told me was, no matter how much money they offer you, and he said they, as he pointed to my chest, he said, never forget who you are or where you come from. And he walked away from me. And I didn't get it at the time until the nigga left. And I said, oh. And him and Charlie Murphy would tell me the same things all the time. And then I got it. This is a war. And there is these cats are sorcerers, and we need to take, and I know the words magic and sorcery takes people to make you think that I'm talking about the Eastwick Chronicles or, or Harry Potter, but this is real. 
because it's affecting our baby. So when they see all these signs visually that say whatever has happened in urban America as far as the perception on television and film, I was basically the fly on the wall. That's why this brother is so correct. There you go, we're so correct when he says we are at war. And I know it's somewhat difficult to believe that a war can be anything other than physical, but it is. He asking me, you know what I'm saying, if I was going to sell my soul, telling me what I needed to do to take my career to the next level in the dark. And I came to the realization that this world is nothing like we thought it was. And I also came to realize that the world is not controlled and run by the people and the institutions that we're told it is. The truth is very, very different. In actual fact, there are various um, organizations and groups working through secret society networks that over a vast period of time have come to control and manipulate pretty much every aspect of daily human life. And that absolutely includes the entertainment industry. So in all these cases, we have the control system that is running the show when it comes to the music industry, placing their little calling cards and their little clues in plain sight. They're letting you know who owns these artists because their artists are owned lock, stock and barrel. And there's a phrase that you often hear, which is, they've sold their souls for fame and fortune. And I would suggest that rather than that being a, a myth or a convenient kind of quip or phrase, there is a lot of truth to uh, that statement. I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I, I never really heard the, the gospel in its purest, in its purest, you know what I'm saying? In purity and in truth, you know what I'm saying? I didn't know that Jesus Christ was the only way. Thank you.